human being can see. All animals eat, breathe. Only men think. Do you realize that? Huh? We have to think about that. Huh? The immanent dignity of man, huh? of the person, human person. And we are made for truth. Our intellect is tending continually to truth. And because our, my intellect is constantly tending to truth, I ask questions. I am searching for. I am thirsty for truth. I am never satisfied. And we see that very well with children. Too. As well, I told that maybe to your children want to know. They discover the world. They want to know what is that? What is that? What is that? Why? Huh? Sometimes they are tiring. They are they, they are boring. Huh? Stop questioning, I'm tired. Parent, huh? teacher, everyone will see a child asking questions, it should be so happy. Yesterday in my class, in the other class, a, a, a woman, she's a teacher in kindergarten, and she spoke about that to me. The problem now for children to think. They want have time to think, they have to move. They move, they move, they have to move, to move, to move. They have to think. Thinking huh, implies that we are attentive, we observe, and we ask questions, and we ask questions not only to ourselves, but questions to others, to my mother, to my father, to my grandmother, to my grandfather. Huh? It is inscribed in my nature. I am essentially rational. To be rational, it is in my essence, my nature. Uh, Aristotle say man is a rational animal. Even in our animality, we are rational. Your cat eat. You eat. Do you eat the same way? Does your cat, before the meal, no. say the blessing? No. The cat use a, a fork or... No. <laughs> Do, does he, he wait that the other cat are ready to eat before eating? No. But man is intelligent. Man, when he eats, he uses his intellect. Not only his mouth. We are animal, yes, but we are rational animal. That means we, it is my essence to be reasonable. It is my essence to be intelligent. It is my formula, what makes me different from all the rest of the world, it is the fact I think. So if thinking is the characteristic of the human being, it is excessively important to know what is thinking. That is logic. And philosophy of man in anthropology, and we study how we think. Okay? They go together. So it is an essential characteristic, huh? and kids uh, manifest their intelligence through asking questions. Uh, a child who is very quiet, like a statue, oh, he is so wise. Huh? <laughs> danger, big danger. The child is sick. Maybe he is autistic. A child must ask questions. As soon, that is marvelous, I have my sister, one of my sisters, I have the privilege to have six sisters. They are not nuns, sisters. And four are living, and one has now two little great children. And what she, what astonishes her, it is the fact that they are open to the reality, they ask questions, they are, they are like a sponge. They are never satisfied. Continually, they ask, they want to know. It's marvelous. That is a sign of intelligence. And, and when you speak to children and they smile, you understand what you say. It's a sign of intelligence. When you talk to your cat, does he smile? <laughs> Maybe. If he is satisfied with a good, <laughs> a good, a good meal. Hmm? But it's, it's only that. No? It, uh, we can say that man is questioning animal. He is endowed with natural curiosity. It, because of that, man progresses. 
the progress in the history uh, of science, of uh, agriculture, of anything, is because man is never satisfied. He wants to know more and more and more. He want, uh, because he is button? curious, he's progressing. Yes, brother. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, the natural what? It is a natural curiosity. Oh, huh? curiosity. Natural tendency, thirst for knowledge. A good example of that it is when our ancestors looked at birds. And someone, they dreamed, oh, they, I will like to fly like a bird. <laughs> the other say, you are crazy. I like, you know, why birds are flying? And now they observe birds. And they finally, after thousands of years, one, maybe two or three million of years, man now is flying. One hundred times higher than a condor. Huh? One thousand times faster than a bird. Why? Because he is curious. He wants to look. Another example of that huh, it is Mr. Pape. Mr. Pape is a French engineer. And he was in, his, the, in, his, in the kitchen, and his, his wife was preparing the, the meal. And he observed that the cover of the pot was boom, boom. He asked the question, why that cover is going up, going down, going up, going down. He, he did not stop there. It's funny, huh? Going up, going down. No, he asked why. <laughs> and he discovered the power of steam. And because of that discovery, we arrive to a new era, and the era of industrial. Industry, it is because of Pape. He asked question. It's the same for every invention. Newton. Newton was taking his siesta, huh? his nap under a tree. And he saw an apple falling down. Billions of men and women for millions of years saw apple falling down from a tree, no? But what he did? Asked he asked question. Why the apple is not going up? Huh? It is going down, but why is not going up? And he searched, he discovered the law of gravity. Because of that, we can go to the moon, we can go to Mars, we can go to Mm -hmm. Not to the sun because it will be melt down. <laughs> that that is interesting. Every discovery uh, comes from a question, a problem. Computing. Uh, it was discovered by 16, 1960 by uh, a Jew in Israel. He was asked, hey, can you build a machine uh, get that can transform? Uh, 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 what the secretary is typing uh, on the screen so she can control and not all the time copy one, two, three, four, five times the same letter because she makes a little uh, mistake or uh, the, the boss say, oh no, I think I will change a word and again, you know, you, you, you don't know that, I know that. Typewriter, hmm? taka 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 taka. So imagine to transform the signal of finger into electric finger so that come to a screen. It was a great discovery of the computer. No question. Everything. Columbus. Huh? Why Christopher Columbus came to it? Because the king asked, is it not possible to go to China on the other side instead of passing through the uh, Middle East to go to the ocean? Jacques Cartier the same. All those who discover, they ask questions. So, ask questions. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> in fact, observe to observe, we see and uh, we observe. If there is a difference between to see and to observe. What is the difference? Observe is to see with attention. Attention. Uh, with to see with attention. Observe. And when after that we observe, and we try to understand, we ask questions. 
And if we find an answer, what we will do? We'll find an application. And technology follows science. The discovery of science are applied after that into technology for the benefit of the people. So amazing, huh? to be amazed. According to Aristotle, man can be defined a rational animal. Thinking is his highest operation and follow a great path to attain the object of what is uh, uh, object, which is the truth. You know, in our society, materialistic society, utilita utilitarian society, we judge the value of people, not the, the sign of the cross, but the bad sign. <laughs> not the sign of the cross, but that. Oh, la la, buff, Mr. Buff, that Mr. Uh, well, uh, Bill Gates, you know? Oh, wonderful. But what is the most important operation of mine? Is this to process money? It is to think. We should ask, why Bill Gates, why Buffett has so much money? <laughs> that is a good question. Not to admire it because they have money, but to admire them because they use their mind to, have money, to produce money. Yeah. So you see, you go on the road in Vietnam, and you see a beautiful farm, a beautiful farm. With, yeah, see. What is the question you should ask? How that person arrived to have a so beautiful farm? Yeah. So that we, we go to the result, maybe we should go first, how men can attain that result. And the great value is not that. It is the mind. If you never saw a cat or a, a dog be, being a, a capitalist, huh? <laughs> no capitalistic job. Only man is a capitalist. Only man is a communist. <laughs> because only man is able to think. Not to think. Okay? So the procedure of thinking, huh? So we cannot, uh, uh, you know, like we start, when I speak, no, I speak English. My language is not English, but when I speak English, I must obey the law of English. I don't obey the law of French. That is, when you study a language, you have to change your mind. Huh? You have to say, now I am in another language, so I have to, st to study the method English people use to talk. If you go to France, you see, now I have to change my mind and to use the language, huh, the, the way French talk, etc. So it is to think, we cannot think in any way. We have to say, follow a method, a, a path, a path. Method, huh, meta in Greek is, is with, and path, huh, odos, odos, odometer, odos, the pathway. Huh? A path, a way. So it, we have to follow a way, a, a method. And that method is logic. Logic is the method of thinking. How we think. It is the grammar of thinking. If you don't know the English grammar, it is difficult to talk in a coherent way. In every language. It's the same if I study Vietnamese or Spanish. I have to know. If you want to study Latin, you have to understand the Latin grammar. Huh? The method. <laughs> so thinking, uh, therefore, uh, there is a need for a method. So the process, where well, is now we can find that method for you. It is a logic textbook. And the textbook of Sister Spengler, I told that you, I think last class, for me is the best I found in all my experience as a teacher. The best. I can write that, I can affirm that in every one. I, I use many books in my life. The most pedagogical book is that book. You have that. Enjoy it. <laughs> and I gave you a, a summary, a commentary of that. Huh? I, I go now to... Uh, <laughs> so finally, we can see that um, logic is uh, not the knowledge, the way we know how we think. So if I know it is science, huh? to know something, to know the phenomenon of chemistry, Huh? To know the physical phenomenon, physics, it is a science. To know the way we think is a science, but it, it is applied to practice. Huh? And that is art. Huh? Art. 
So logic is a science, logic is an art. Like in, in your language, in literature, you have grammar and you have poi poem, poetry, huh? literature. It is an art, the art of expressing in beautiful words your thought, a poem. Hmm? You have that in every language. That is an art. So thinking is also an art. Not only it is we, don't, we study the law, a science, but we learn how to express correctly our thinking, observing the law of the art of thinking. So what is logic? It is the art uh, of thinking or reasoning, huh? the art of going from the known to the unknown. That we cannot know something if we don't know already something before. That means the way we, pro we know it is always founded on our no precedent knowledge. Or if you want, on our past experience, past knowledge. Uh, you will go to the refectory at noon. Well, maybe you will take soup. My doctor does not want I eat soup because too much sodium. But you, you are young, you have no problem. So you, you taste the soup. You say, hmm. What you put in the soup? Salt, pepper, spice, you know? Well, in fact, why do you do that? Because, well, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you discovered that to, to give taste to soup, you must put some spice, some pepper. You, know? you start from the known to, to find a solution. The solution is to give a better taste to the soup. You know? Every time we, uh, we are knowing something new, it, uh, it, it is not absolutely new. It is always founded on the past, on the past experience. What I tell you now, it's not, a, it's not absolutely new. Because every time I say something to you, you refer to your own understanding you acquired before. And for example, if I say, Canada is a cold country. So we, we are treating it. Canada, cold country. Canada. You study geography, you look at Canada, is the no man land. No man land between Alaska and the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Canada is not. Cold, you know what is cold? Those were here last year, you know. A country, you know country. I am a Vietnamese, I am a South American, I know what is. So you re continually you refer to what you know. To know what you don't know. <laughs> so it is important to have a, no, a, a big knowledge to understand something new. Okay? So, uh, and it's also the art of solving problems. I saw that with you. Huh? Every time we face a problem, we question and we find a solution. Huh? That is the search for truth, that is logic. Huh? So, it is, uh, re we reflect on the past to know something new. So, that is the importance of knowing the language. The importance of having the right concept. I told you that logic is important for theology. Why? Because in logic, we will learn some term that may be used in theology. But if you don't study logic, we have difficulty. And when the priest will speak, for example, about substance and accident. Now, substance, we can think about butter, about uh, oil. Huh? An accident, you think, oh, last year I was in a taxi, and the taxi crashed a, po a post, you know? You are totally outside of the track. You must have a good concept to understand something new. You know, the f when we build a house, we have foundation. After that, we put another floor, another floor, another floor. And that is knowledge. Knowledge is always based on the first, the, the known, what we acquire, and we build above that. Therefore, the extreme importance to understand the language. So don't stop learning English. <laughs> it's the same for me. Every day I go to my dictionary to find the meaning of terms or to precise the concept. Even in French, 
Sometimes I have to, to go to the dictionary to know exactly what is the meaning of that word. Never accept a word, a concept without understanding. Never. Go to the dictionary. Go to another. Ask a question. Okay? Um, <coughs> man knows from what already knows, not from experience. In fact, we progress from our experience. Be careful, not any kind of experience. An experience we reflect on. You can make 10 times, 50 times the, man, the, the same stupid error, and you never change because you don't reflect on the cause of your error. If you want to progress, you have to reflect, to avoid. Huh? It is the method of trial and error. Huh? But that requires reflection. Reflection on the past to prepare the future. That is thinking. Huh? Okay? It is the condition to progress. Otherwise, you will always do the same mistake. Hmm? The same mistake. It is, it is true for everything. Cooking or writing, huh? it is the same problem. If you burn your cake one time, two times, three times, four times, you should ask why I, am, I burn my cake. <laughs> Try to find the reason why and correct that, improve. So uh, the element of solving a problem. First, in every uh, problem, we have a general principle. Well, you go to the, to, for breakfast in the morning, and you want to drink coffee. So, you know, coffee is not under the, it's not sufficient to open the tap and flow water, you have coffee. No. You have to put water in the microwave or on the, some eating source, you know. So what is the principle here? Here, to, to bring coffee, we must have an eating source. Now, this morning, I want to drink coffee. Therefore, I, want, I must find a heating source in my kitchen. My you, know? you, you, of course, never you see that. But you think that. You reason. You reason. It is through reasoning huh, that we are right to find a solution. And in, I, every time we reason, we use a general principle. We have a, I have a chart, we have a, a pencil. Okay. What is the general principle here? Every time someone wants to write on the board, he must use a chart. <laughs> Now I have to write on the board, I have to find a chunk. You know? That is reasoning. In fact, in when we study uh, syllogism, we study that. In every time we affirm something, we start from a general principle. If you say, oh, my sister, you are so kind. So we have to see why. And you have to your sister, for example, she is very, she is ready to to help you. So all those who are uh, who are uh, uh, ready to help others, they are kind. My sister is ready to help me. Therefore, my sister is kind. You know, we don't re uh, we we reason like that, but it is so fast we have no time to think about that. <laughs> but it is there. In every action we do, we obey a uh, universal uh, general principle. And that general principle is applied to a special circumstance, a special case, a special problem. Huh? And we have a conclusion. That means we arrive to affirm that that is the best way, or that is not a good way, huh, to the conclusion. Okay? If you try, for example, uh, you, you have somebody give you some different spices, what you have to know, you have to experiment them. Huh? And, 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 you, 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 and when the one is good for you, you say, no, I, I will buy that kind of spice. You know? I will not use the other, that kind of spice. That comes from a general principle. Huh? So that kind of spice is pleasing. To, so I, I, I use the, the spice, which is good for my stomach, my taste, etc. In, in your life, some Thing you don't want to eat. For example, someone don't want to eat cucumber. He cannot digest cucumber. 
a general principle applied to a, a special uh, uh, circumstance. So in fact, when we think, we use the three uh, stages of Catholic action. In fact, in Catholic action, Card uh, Cardinal Cardin, Cardinal Cardin, of Father Cardin, he was a priest in Belgium, Cardin, Uh, he promoted, we call Catholic action, and he gave two things. To see, to judge, and to act. Those who participated in two Catholic actions, they know that. Huh? To see, to observe. But that is the problem. Secondly, to judge. And to judge, we have to reason. Huh? Because a judgment is the fruit of the reasoning. And finally, we apply that to the concrete activity. It is to act. You do that continually. Preparing coffee, writing your paper, uh, cleaning the floor, taking the bus to go to Hartford, etc. Continually, we have to do that. To see, to observe, to observe, to see, to judge, and to act. Oops. The three steps, huh? the three steps. Now, I'll go to the next paragraph. Priority of seeing the problem. Well, uh, I am a old teacher. Many times in my life, when I ask a question, I examination, the student gave me a lot of information, very good information. But they are not the information I ask. We say in French, tourner autour du pot, huh? to, to turn around the, the pot, the question. They don't answer the question. We have the same case with some people, they go to the doctor. The doctor says, well, I, 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 do you have some ache in your stomach? Oh, doctor, you know last, 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 last night I have difficulty to sleep. They don't answer the question. I know somebody like that. He goes to the doctor, he is afraid to answer the question. And the doctor is become angry. You see, I ask the question, answer my question. <laughs> because he cannot find a solution if uh, you don't answer the question. But there's the problem. So the, the most important thing in every every work you do it is to know what you will, you want to do. What is the question? If you are asked to prepare a cake, it's not the time to prepare a roast beef. Hmm? That means questioning. We call that in Latin status questionis, no? the state of the question. That is very important. Uh, if ever you go to pass an uh, essay, five pages of essay, and they give you three subjects, you take one subject, you have to think what is exactly the question? What the teacher is asking me? Not what I know, what he wants to answer. And that is very important because if we don't distinguish, huh, fix the, the problem, we cannot fix, uh, we cannot hear. For example, you go to the garage with your car and there is a big noise in your car. Huh? What do you want? You want the, the, the mechanic huh, find exactly the problem. You say, oh, you know, I think you, you should, you should change your lamp. Your lamp are very old. I would change. No, the problem is not there. The problem is, what is the problem? Find the problem. Huh? <laughs> it, it, no, it is, it is so obvious, but sometimes we are afraid to turn around. We try to avoid the problem. Hmm? So status question is, huh? and all knowledge stems from wondering and astonishing. In fact, Newton, Pape, uh, all those people who discovered something important, they were astonished. They were amazed. Uh, at the same time, all others see nothing, but they see something. So to ask a question, first we must be amazed about something, astonished about something. Something is seen. I, I give you an example. You are in, in a car. We are four per people in a car. And you, you have very good ear. And you see. There is a special noise in that car. And he said, 
You say, hey, driver, you are astonished because you listen. And you stop and you discover that your tire is losing air. Why you stop? Because you find a problem. Huh? Because you were attentive to uh, the status question. The problem is not in the gas, the problem is not in the light, it's not in the, it is in the tire. Because you listen. And you know, every time the doctor is the same, what the doctor uses a stethoscope. Huh? <laughs> no? <laughs> to find, to fix the problem, huh? to be astonished. Oh, something is not going well, you know? Not going well. You know? Okay. So, um, a look at the etymology of admiration. Admiration comes from Latin admiro. Miro means to look at attentively, huh? to gaze at, to look attentively. And add tower, two tower, in direction of. So, admiration, astonishment, to be amazed of, that is the beginning of searching for an answer. It's also the beginning of love. Huh? Beginning of love. When a man and a woman fall in, in love because they are admiring one another. Admiring that means looking specially to them. Uh, somebody told me he, dis he, he, he met his wife at Mass. So he went to Mass every Sunday, and in the other band there were beautiful women. He was very pious, but sometimes he, he had admiration for Jesus, but he had admiration. <laughs> and finally, they marry. You know? Why they love or they marry? Because they admire, they look at. Interesting, no? It is the same for everything. It is the same for love, it is the same for every action. If you, have, if you see, a, if you admire, <laughs> if you look at a problem, then you find a solution, etc. That requires attention, reflection. Attention, reflection, and that today is very difficult. Very difficult. Why people today are difficult to think of by themselves? Because they are always covered with noise, with publicity, with television, and with iPad, etc. So we have to. We cannot Papin, for it, Mr. Papin, or Mr. Newton. They will never discover those important inventions if you did not pay attention. So in class, I'm sure you have to pay attention. <laughs> but the problem in, no, in many schools, it is that children have difficulty to pay attention. They are not attentive. If you are not attentive, you cannot reflect. If you cannot reflect, you cannot learn. Or you will learn and you will forget, you will not assimilate. Okay, I go uh, further. Stating the problem is laying down the goal. In fact, when you want to, 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 uh, to find hot water for your coffee, you have a, a goal. You have an end. You have a finality. In fact, when I ask question, already I have a finality. When the doctor asks you a question about your stomach, uh, your digestion or your eye, he has a finality to heal you, to find a way to heal you. Hmm? Okay. Um, well, you can read that by yourself. Huh? I go to page three. In fact, thinking, what is thinking? First thinking is discovering what is a thing. And how that thing goes, match, fit with other things. We call that a subject and a predicate. Predicate comes from Latin, dicere, huh? pre about. And we think about. For example, I say John is a good golfer. I took I take the quality of being a good golfer and I apply that to John. You know? I predicate. Or if you want, 
At primary school, we don't say that. We say attribute. Eh? It is the same thing. Attribute or predicate. Eh? So I say, for example, here, John. John is an honest. Is John an honest citizen? You don't know. Because there is two possibilities. I can add John is a good citizen or John is not a good citizen. How I can say John is a good citizen and John is not a good citizen? Only if I refer to X pay react. To a reason. To have a reason, huh? a reason why I can say the predicate good citizen is applied to the subject John. Applied to the we studied that so in the three operation. Okay. Um, what is the meaning of subject? Subject. Subject comes from Latin subject subjectum. Yacere yectum means to place, to place, to throw, to place. Huh? I place. Huh? To be laid down. And sub under. So John is the subject John, huh? the sub is under what? He is a man. John is a Catholic, <laughs> maybe a Protestant. John is a American. John is a businessman. John is a golfer etc. is a father. All those attributes are in the subject. The subject is supporting the attribute. You understand the meaning of subject? Huh? Sub, under, jack, yachiri. They support that. And all that here, they are attributed to John. So that is the meaning of subject and the meaning of Predicate. It's important to understand that. Huh? Object, it is what is front of me. Subject, it is what is under. Huh? I am the subject of the Queen of England because I am a member of the uh, British Commonwealth, like Brother Severinus <laughs> and uh, Father Anaito. Huh? We are in the Commonwealth. That means we are the subject huh? and uh, the Queen of England. Other it is Oshinim, or it is what uh, what, or it is uh, and Francis. Huh? Francis is our king, no? Is our pope, Papa, huh? mm -hmm. is our father. Hmm? Like the father, all the children are huh? depending on the father. Subject, huh? subject. Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, now I go to. Oh yes, I continue. If I say. I can say John is a good golfer. It is because I saw him playing golf and he did not use 150 times to put the ball into the... No. Uh, if he picked 150 times, I think he should... He cannot be called a good golfer. Uh, so, you know, I must have a reason why. In that reason why, we call that middle term. You know, this morning, it is an introduction. Everything now, after we be developed in detail. Okay? So if you don't understand everything, don't be discouraged. It is a kind of appetizer. Hmm? <coughs> I hope it is a good appetizer. <coughs> okay, now I go to B. The outline of logical thinking. How, what have uh, if, if, on, if the GPS, if you want the outline, uh, outline, the GPS of thinking. is interesting to see GPS because 20 years ago I will never use that expression in class because GPS did not exist. <laughs> Today I can. Uh, you don't understand what is a GPS. Uh, so I can use that. But if I teach to somebody who never saw a GPS, I will not use GPS. The GPS indicates you the way. Here we have what, that, what is the way we follow to arrive huh, to have a, a complete 
a way of good way of thinking. So the first is we call simple apprehension. So apprehendere in Latin is this to catch, to grasp. The best word to express that is to grasp, to grasp, grasping. The grasping of what is a thing. If you don't know what is a corazon, or what is a pumpkin, or what is an apple, what is a kiwi. I give you kiwi. 20 years ago, I'm sure nobody in the United States, except someone who went to Australia or New Zealand, knew what was a kiwi. Never. I never had a kiwi uh, at Christmas when I was a boy. I have an orange. One orange. It was the gift of Christmas. One orange. <coughs> My mother used her old sack, huh? That, huh? And she put one apple, <laughs> one orange, huh? and one chocolate, <laughs> a few quenades. That was our Christmas gift. Not the iPad. <laughs> orange. But there was no kiwi. No kiwi. <laughs> no kiwi. Why? Because nobody knew what was a kiwi. So if somebody arrived, you say, you know, do you want a kiwi? Kiwi? What is that? Huh? You want to know what is a kiwi? Now you know what is a kiwi. So the first thing it is to know what is a thing. Huh? What is a thing? What it is? What? Huh? The whatness of the thing. Huh? Or in Latin, the quiddity. Of a thing. What is that? Quid. What is that? First question of a child. What is that? What is that? Hmm? Uh, that is we call simple apprehension. For example, what dog, rose, bees, etc. are? Hmm? Can, because we cannot, I cannot say kiwi is good for health if I don't know what is a kiwi. I don't know. Only those who grasp the meaning can understand. Therefore, it's excessively important in any science to define the terms. In fact, that, that first huh, apprehension is to arrive to a definition of the term. To know what is that. If you don't have the definition, you cannot understand. You lose your time. Is the reason why if you go to France, for example, you will require, like United States, you will pass an examination of language. Otherwise, you go to university and the teacher speaks and they don't understand. Now, the importance of mastering the concept, mastering the word, mastering the language, and not only mastering the word, to master the content of the word, the, the meaning of the word. That is the first step. And we, the first step to think. It is to know what is the thing. Hmm? It is very important. For, uh, did you ever uh, search for mushroom? Uh, you know what is a mushroom? Did you go in the forest to find mushroom in Vietnam or in, you know, in South America? Mm -hmm. Or in France? And in November, millions of people, they go in the wood, in the forest, to find mushroom because they like it. But a mushroom can be Poisonous. Good or poison. So before eating a, a mushroom, you must be sure that it's not a poisonous mushroom. No? You have to look. You have to grasp what kind. What? What is that? Excessively important. No? For a, a doctor, for example. You go to the doctor. You say, doctor, I feel sick. I am sick of logic. <laughs> I'm sick. Oh no. So if we want to be healed, the doctor must find exactly what you have. What it is the disease you have. In 1971, I I went to Africa to work in Cameroon. And every Tuesday in, in our seminary, we have three hour exam every week. He had to write five pages without notes only to their mind. Huh? Do that. <laughs> and I was supervising the exam. 
And we have a dispensary in that mission, used mission. And the sister, one of the sisters gave me a, a magazine, New Weeks. New Weeks. I read that, and it was about a strange disease in Uganda, where people were dying. There are photographs of people like skeleton, and they were asking, "Is that disease come from monkey?" They were searching, "What is that?" And now we know, it is AIDS. AIDS. But at that time, nobody knew it was AIDS. They were searching for what is that? The same thing for today, Ebola. What we know, people die. Like we saw in 1971 in Uganda, people died. But we want to know what? What it is this disease? Why? Because if we don't know what it is, we cannot heal, we cannot correct, we cannot change the situation. First thing, to know what is a thing. Secondly, <coughs> by the way, in that section of what, <coughs> there is no truth. That means, if you say, for example, what is a cyclone? You know what is a cyclone? A cyclone. <coughs> it is a man with only one eye. You said that in the comics, huh? A man. A nose, a mouth, but only one eye. Here. That is a cyclop. You know what is a cyclop, no? You have a clear idea what is a cyclop. Is the cyclop true or false in itself? No. Cyclop is cyclop. Leprechaun. You know what is a leprechaun? No, you are not Irish. Who is Irish here? Scotch Irish. Can you explain what is a leprechaun? A little man that runs around trying to steal it back his gold. Okay, so uh, it is a fairy uh, being, <laughs> a fairy Irish. <laughs> and, and, and Irish meet them when they drink too much beer <laughs> on St. <Saint> Patrick's Day. <laughs> so you know what is a leprechaun. We know what is a cyclone. Is cyclop, the word cyclop, the concept cyclop, or the concept leprechaun, true or false? No. No. Oh. It is indifferent. But if I say, oh. there are cyclops in Vietnam, <laughs> there are leprechaun in Ireland, that false. is true or false? False. 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 Oh, okay. Except when you drink too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand, huh? That means to know a thing in itself is not to affirm the truth. We affirm the truth when we put the subject in relation with a predicate. Cyclops are in Ireland or are in Canada, huh? uh, etc. Okay? Now, the second, if we put together two ideas, two concepts, we have a judgment. That is the second operation of the mind. Judging, judgment. In Greek, it's kritein. Why I say that? Because the word kritein gives the word critics. Or criticism. What is a critic? When I criticize, I judge. And to criticize is to discern what is good, what is not good. To discern if the thing I say is conform to the reality or not conform to the reality. If I say a cyclop is very powerful. A cyclop is very powerful. Is it true or not? But for you, it is not true. Why? Because Cyclops does not exist. Yes. Therefore, that affirmation is not conform to the reality. Huh? It's not real. It's not conform to the reality. So what is the criterion? Huh? Criterion. The measure of truth. Huh? 
the criterion of truth of truth is the conformity of our mind to the reality. You say that one more time? It's the conformity of my mind, of our mind, to the reality. If I say John is a good golfer, in fact John is the one who is able to, uh, to be the first uh, putting the ball into the hole uh, uh, only with 19 or 20 uh, strike, I can say he's a good golfer. But if it takes 200 times to shoot, I say no, he's not a good golfer. Why? Because it is conform or not conform to the reality. You have a criteria. The teacher has a criteria. We have no thermometer to measure if you understand. But we have examination. <laughs> An examination, in fact, it is a criterion to know if you understand or not. Truth. We have to, uh, I cannot say my student no, understand very well my subject. Because, oh, when I look at them, they smile, and they, they are open eye, they are not sleeping, they are snoring. No, I have to see. Huh? and you can express your knowledge through your answer. You know? It's a criterion. I cannot affirm anything as true if the thing is not conformed to the reality. You understand that? That is excessively important. Truth is the conformity of my mind to the reality. If I say, huh, if they ask me in Montreal, how many students do you have in your class of logic? I say, oh, I have 53. I have 53 students in my, you know, I have an important teacher. All the students want to come to my class. 53. Is it true or not? True or not? Not. True. not. Why? Because it's not conformed to the reality. reality. It's simple. Truth does not depend on myself. Truth is measured by the reality. That is the difference between relativism. Relativist, truth is coming from me. I made the truth. But truth, objectively, is measured by the reality. OK? Uh, I go to the third, the third operation, no? a simple apprehension, judgment, and reasoning. No? Reasoning. The third one is reason. I use my reason. What is reason? It is, in fact, to start from what I know to what I don't know. In fact, every time I reason, I use my knowledge, acquire knowledge, to acquire a new knowledge. That is reason. And the expression of reasoning is demonstration, especially syllogism. Hmm? For example, whatever is excellent cooling agent, M, M, E, mid middle term. Huh? Middle term, you remember, it is the Y that allows us to unite a predicate to a subject. Huh? Y, middle term. Uh, excellent agent will help out fire. P means predicate. Water, subject, is an excellent cooling agent, mean, mean the same thing. Huh? Therefore, water will help out, will, will help put out fire. So in the problem here, uh, reasoning solves the unknown. Hmm? Uh, is water help to, uh, to uh, help uh, put out fire? That is the problem, the question. And we, we use a general principle. You know, I told you, in every reasoning, we use a universal principle. What is the universal principle here? Whatever is excellent cooling agent will help out fire. That is the universal principle. After that, we apply that to water. We can apply that to carbon, uh, car uh, carbonic uh, uh, um, ice. Or we can apply that to sand. We can apply that to many things. They can put out fire. But here we apply that 
And we know that water is good to put out fire. Therefore, we can use water. And the reason why in every city we have water with iron, huh? iron, and then there is a fire, and you have, it is prohibited to park 25 feet on, bo on both sides. You have that in chapter here, <laughs> sign, no parking here. Huh? Because fire, water is a good, uh, is a good, uh, excellent cooling agent against fire. Okay? So the three, the three operations. First, we have that here, huh? simple apprehension. And the expression is the word or the term or the definition. And that word express a concept. The concept, I cannot see that. It is in your mind. But I can know you have a concept when you use the right word. You know? For example, if I, 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 I tell you, uh, 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 I need a hammer. Give me a hammer. Take, bring me a hammer. And you, are, you arrive with a carrot. <laughs> that means you don't understand what is a hammer. <laughs> Common sense, no? Huh? That is first. Huh? Concepts are expressed through words. So the extreme importance of language when we study philosophy of man, we study language. Secondly, judging. Huh? Judgment is the, in, in my mind. But I express my judgment through proposition. A subject and a predicate united by a verb. Huh? And finally, I reason. In my mind, huh? uh, it is a, the mental, uh, it is a syllogism and express that through words. Uh, they said. In fact, it should be better to, to, to change that, to put syllogism, oral, and demonstration. Both are good. Okay. Now I finish. I have a few minutes to the last part. Thinking is an art. Imitating nature. In fact, to think correctly, we must respect our nature. A sculptor, to sculpt correctly, must respect the nature of marble. So when we think correct, if we want to think correctly, we must respect the, our nature. What is that? I mean the way normally a human being thinks. And human beings think using the three st stages. Huh? In simple apprehension, judgment, and reason. And when we study that, we study the laws of thinking. If you don't observe that, you produce we call fallacies, huh? error, etc. Okay? I continue. Um, so when we uh, we have an art, when we are an artist, we want to produce something. We have a goal. We have an end. So what is the end in logic? It is the natural desire to know. Na naturally, man wonders. Man does not accept everything as a pure fact. When you are in front of a fact, you want to know why. Suppose you arrive in your kitchen after the class, huh, sister, and you see the milk on the floor, and you see uh, the, 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 the refrigerator is open, you see, ah, that is a fact. But there's a question. Who did that? Why? You are searching for the uh, maybe it is your dog, your cat, or maybe a ghost, I don't know. <laughs> we cannot accept a pure fact. Every time we are in front of an even a fact, we want an explanation. Uh, that is the thirst for truth, uh, curiosity, astonishment. Secondly, begins with sense knowledge. In philosophy of Aristotle, St. Thomas, our knowledge passes to our senses. That means we know from our experience, personal experience, sense experience. We, we cannot know other without passing through our own experience. Okay? So that is excessive. We study that in philosophy of men. Now the first part is to study sensation, sense knowledge. Huh? Sense knowledge. Our senses are extremely important. Uh, Two weeks ago, my sister-in-law lost her sight. She became suddenly blind. She's, a, she's a excessively painful for her and my father, brother, you know, because eyes are the gate to the reality. Like my touch, you know, my senses open me to the reality. You know? 
I know through my senses. Of course, not every philosopher accepts that. Descartes does not accept that. He says, I know because I think. But we can say, we think because we know through our senses. Um, <coughs> so we know through abstraction. So we study that huh? with the knowledge we have, our senses, but we don't stay there. We go further and we are to universalize by abstraction. And also we have a criterion we can control our own knowledge. And that is verification. We can verify the value of our knowledge. Descartes says that our senses induce us into error using the, exa the example of the stick. You know, you put a stick in the water and the water breaks the stick. You see, you know, yes, but you have a way to verify if the stick is broken. You take the stick is not broken. It's apparently broken. And now we have to find why the stick is apparently broken. And it is because the density of air and the density of water is not the same. We can verify. But we have to trust our sense. It is because realism. Realism. And moderate realism for moderate realism for St. Thomas and Aristotle. That means our knowledge starts from my senses. But we don't stop there. We go to the intellect. Okay? Now, a word about sensible. The word sensible in, uh, in philosophy means to be known through my senses. It's not the meaning on the next page huh? to have a good sense. The good meaning, huh? a sensible man, it is a man who is uh, intelligent. No. Sensible here is a technical meaning. Huh? We have that in Miriam Webster. In fact, the three first meanings are related to my senses. When I say a thing is sensible, that means can be known, able, huh? able, able means able, huh? can be can be able, huh? yeah. be known by my senses. Intellect, intellect, uh, intelligible, known by my intellect. Okay. Uh, I go to the second part, the heart of hearts. Uh, the knowledge of the principle, we saw that. And in every Reasoning, we know the universal principle. And after that, we apply that in a methodical, in a systematically way. Systematically. That is the method. And in logic, we study the method. The way to study correctly, to think correctly. It is the study of the laws of no definition, the laws of judging, and the laws of reasoning. I go to the next page. In fact, logic is the art of art. Of course, not everyone will accept that. But in fact, if we are a scientist, scientist, if you are an artist, you have to use your logic. <laughs> because when you paint, they use your logic, your mind. You are not a monkey with a, pen, with a, a brush. Huh? You have an idea to pass through your painting, through your sculpting through your writing. So even you have a poet, you have to be logic. Logic is just in everything. As soon as you think, you must use logic. So we can say logic is the art of art. Not another science, not another art can be, can function without logic. So therefore logic is very important. Even if you are a great artist, it is a tool, it is a path to learning, it is the form of thinking. That means the form, that means the soul. In every, every time you think, you use logic. Every time you speak, you use grammar. You know, I, talk, I teach from one hour, huh, from, uh, for one hour and more, and I use English grammar. And you think, and all the time you think, Receiving my teaching, you use logic. But you don't know you use logic, you know? <laughs> but you use logic. Huh? Okay. Um, now, um, I continue. You um, well, yeah, have an example. I go in the middle. Huh? Logic gives only how and not what. 
Logic does not do give the content of uh, no knowledge. It gives only how we attain knowledge, only how we judge, only how we reason. Logic is not about the content. It's the reason why logic is not concerned directly with truth or falsity. But logic is concerned with validity. Huh? Validity. It is valid or not valid. Correct or not correct. So it is a universal uh, value for every student, for every man, in fact. Uh, and for you, it is important because you acquire a rich vocabulary and concept in theology. Logic point, important question in rational psychology, epistemology, and metaphysics. In fact, logic is the best introduction to philosophy. Because, for two reasons. First, because we acquire a new language. Secondly, because when you discuss about logic, we discuss immediately about a lot of problems they will be studied in, in uh, uh, philosophical anthropology, philosophy of man. Huh? In fact, logic gives no definitive answer. Logic is only a method. Uh, how to play the piano, how to use a typewriter, how to use a computer, uh, to use correctly a computer. The content does not depend on logic depend on the other sciences. The other sciences would put content in logic, but logic is the tool other sciences will use, because every scientist must be a, must use the logic. Must use logic. No, nobody escape logic. Nobody. Um, okay. <coughs> and finally, next page, page eight. <coughs> Uh, in fact, to summarize that, we can say logic gives a universal method of thinking. Uh, logic is informing every person who thinks, either a scientist or a doctor or a poet or a painter. Logic is necessary for to cook and to write a, a poem or to uh, to uh, to think about metaphysics. Logic is everywhere. When you drive your car, you use logic. When you pay, you put the key in the door, into the door to open, you turn, it is logic. You use logic constantly. Logic, in fact, is the method of thinking, and you think constantly. <laughs> so now we are to discover in detail, and, the, and, the, uh, and what I told you, huh, uh, every time you find a new term, a new concept, take the time to write that on the little card, take the time. It will be very beneficial to you. At the end of the semester, you should process a lot of new concepts. And if you process that, you are ready for the rest of your study. The best preparation to the rest of philosophy and theology is the class of Sometimes it seems dry, like mathematics, it's very dry, but you cannot study, we cannot study science if you don't know mathematics. You cannot study philosophy if you don't process logic. The term in logic. Good appetite. And next week, there is no class on Monday. It's the Labor Day. Because it is the Labor Day, we don't work. 